Thomas from Quantum AMC on the show now. Uh, George, thank you very much for joining in. You know, I think what everyone's worried about and, you know, happy also in hindsight is the kind of the mid and the small cap rally that we've had on our hands. But now there is some fear, right? Are we coming to the end? Is this, are the small cap stocks approaching some sort of a bubble zone? Is there too much euphoria? Is it time to step off now the gas pedal? How would you react to all these concerns? Yeah, the, the small cap indices, you know, they have gone, done a phenomenally well over the last uh, few quarters. Uh, but as far as small cap is concerned, there are uh, select companies where, you know, you have a fairly large opportunity size and they have a fairly long uh, headway for growth. Uh, so if you can identify such companies, there is uh, still uh, some headroom. But from a broader market perspective, of course, from a risk reward perspective, large cap appears more favorable. So if you were to take a bunch of stocks, uh, large cap might do well. But over a very long period of time, small and mid cap, it still has uh, potential to outperform uh, purely because of the vast opportunity size and growth headroom which they have. So many of your viewers uh, have SIP investments, right? So mm -hmm. would you recommend perhaps stopping some of those small cap SIP inflows into small cap uh, mutual funds and redirect it to large caps? Is that something you would recommend? See, it depends on the overall asset allocation of that uh, investor. Uh, so, no, what all things do? equal, right? No, yeah. all things uh, equal. So, if all things equal, large cap offers a better risk reward ratio at this point. Mm, okay, so that's the overall sense on mid caps and small caps. Uh, George, uh, you know, our colleague was just uh, detailing a, a great piece on how PSU banks have done the whole cleaning up and how the markets also rewarded these stocks quite a bit, right? Uh, when you look at banks, uh, how are you positioned going forward? Uh, we've seen this underperformance in the traditional large cap uh, private sector names. Uh, and there are, uh, there are questions, there's a debate on margins, for instance, going ahead. Uh, so which way are you looking at rejigging your financials part of the portfolio? Yeah, we are quite uh, bullish on the financial bucket, uh, primarily because, you know, the cycle still continues to be favorable. And, and we have uh, not seen uh, the revival of corporate capex uh, at least for some time, and we are seeing early signs of that uh, kind of picking up from now on. Uh, so that could uh, give some some bit of uh, impetus to the next leg of rally. Plus, uh, delin the credit cost cycle and the delinquencies are uh, likely to be benign even uh, for some time from now. So we are quite uh, uh, quite bullish on the space. In fact, we recently added one of the private sector bank, uh, where uh, they have they have been a bit cautious for a long time and. And considering the favorable credit cycle, they have uh, geared up uh, in terms of increasing their uh, lending. So we have re our recent addition was in a private sector bank. Okay, got that. Uh, George, th thanks a lot for joining us. What do you think of the IT space now? Do you think, you know, we've... We've seen the worst right now and we're likely to pick up from these levels. We're also seeing a lot of large deals being announced. I mean, even yesterday we had that uh, big TCS deal that came through. So how are you looking at this space now? And within it, would you look at large caps, mid caps? How do you uh, position yourself? Yeah, we are positioned more towards the large cap IT space. Uh, and uh, as you said rightly, you know, uh, we are seeing some uh, pick up uh, in terms of the deal wins coming up. Uh, but our sense is, you know, in terms of a broad-based uh, recovery, we, we could be a few quarters away. But but the current valuations are quite favorable. Uh, so from a valuation perspective, you know, we are quite favorable, and and that that's uh, that's the reason, you know, we continue to hold an overweight position in IT. Mm. Uh, do you own any of uh, the defense or shipbuilding stocks, George, in your portfolio? Uh, we we do not have a uh, position at this point. Uh, so primarily because, you know, from a defense or, a, uh, or the sectors which you mentioned, the opportunity size uh, is, is quite large and, and there is some push for indigenization. Uh, so that, that even uh, expands the opportunity size. But those, uh, the execution team seems to be, uh, generally happens over a prolonged period of time. Uh, so if you build uh, that into your models, uh, current valuations, you know, might appear a little stretched. Uh, plus, uh, most of these companies are PSU companies and where, you know, we would like to have a higher margin <laughs> of safety. Uh, and that typically, that's, that's not priced in, at least in the current valuations. So you've never invested in uh, the defense stroke shipbuilding stocks up until now? Yeah, uh, at least uh, for some time we have never invested. Yeah. Okay. So then, um, you know, how would you uh, look at playing CapEx from here on? Uh, the stocks have already rallied so much, and I think that's the question that everybody is grappling with. That if you want to deploy additional money, incremental money, 
then uh, what do you do with this whole capex and industrial theme yeah uh, so we play the capex story through our financial bucket uh, where okay. you know we are we feel you know the valuations are still uh, fairly comfortable and there is uh, so we would play the credit growth story for, through the financial bucket got that all right george we'll uh, leave it on that note thank you very much for uh, joining in good chatting with you today well speaking of capex and industrial